Alright, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the Gambit Files. It has been roughly, yeah, six, seven months since I um, published the first video in this series. Um, when that video was made, my channel was basically brand new. My knowledge of recording and video editing was way lower than it is now. Um, since then, I've actually made about 150 videos. And, um, yeah, my channel has grown a bit. Um, of course, thank you to um, those of you who have supported me and the channel. I really do appreciate it. Um, it warmed my heart, actually, um, hearing people ask when the second video will come out um, about this uh, Gambit file, King's Gambit um, series. And, uh, yeah, here it is. So, woot. Okay. Friend departed. Um, so, you might be wondering why it has taken me so long to get this video done. Um, what some people don't know is that for the first video, I spent not hours, not days, but a couple weeks off and on researching, analyzing, and of course recording um, the video. Um, not to mention having to upload a huge hour and a half video to YouTube. Um, so yeah, which is not easy, let me tell you. Um, but yeah. Um, and this video is no different. Um, so yeah, a lot of work um, went into it, and I hope it shows. Okay, so in the last video, I basically said that I would go into more detail about the King's Gambit. The way I intended to do it was um, just to point out a couple things, sh um, show some basic theory about general things in the King's Gambit, and be done with it in a couple videos. Um, since then, yeah... Um, yeah, since then I decided to basically cover each line individually, which will, yeah, not only provide more content and more, yeah, information on the King's Gambit, but more videos. And um, so, yeah, which I think is um, pretty cool. When I want to see an opening video, you know, I'd much rather see somebody go crazy into detail than sort of, yeah, little, <laughs> little bits of information. So, yeah, okay, I've gone a bit overboard, but what can you do? So, um, yeah, if you think back to the first Gambit file video, you will remember I started with um, a very basic um, opening overview of the King's Gambit, basically showing every possible line that can happen. Not much more than that, but um, just basic stuff, just showing all the different lines. Um, each of those lines that was mentioned will get its own video with, um, yeah, a bit more... Yeah, advanced, you know, theory, and you could take a look at each line or which one you want individually. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'll be more detail into the um, theory and opening itself. And also, 10 games with analysis featuring that line in question. So, alright, down to the video. So, after F4, the King's Gambit, we'll first be taking a look at um, Bishop C4. Um, which is the main alternative to knight to f3, which will be in future videos. Will um, each of those um, lines after knight to f3 will get their own video as well? So, anyways, to kick things off, before we get into knight f3, let's take a look at bishop c4, and um, yeah, let's get into it right now. Okay, just one last quick thing before we get into the video. Um, I wanted to mention that um, because I have a tendency to, um, yeah, just jump into analysis and not, yeah, actually speak about the opening itself. So, um, yeah, I wanted to have a quick word um, about this opening in general. Um, so, yeah, Bishop C4. Um, yeah, what I want to say, okay, just to be blunt about it, black can equalize, all right? <laughs> it's, it's, you know, we live in the modern era. We live with engines that can help us find the truth in the openings. Um, that isn't to say bishop c4 is bad, it's just that black has, you know, an easy time to equalize, um, in many options. Um, many of the moves we'll analyze here for black, all of which more or less lead to equal play. Um, that isn't to say that it's a bad opening again, it just means black can equalize and both sides can fight for the full point. Um, that doesn't mean that, um, bishop c4 is you know, bad again. It's actually quite an interesting line as a surprise weapon. Um, it could be used in Blitz and Rapid, obviously, as, you know, an interesting try. But, um, again, I just wanted to mention, you know, that Black and all these lines um, has a very good chance at equalizing, as you'll see. Um, 
but yeah, I just wanted to mention that just um, to make things clear. But um, yeah, bishop c4 can obviously also lead to madness. Um, and in general, the person who is more prepared, which in theory should be you, <laughs> right? Because you're watching a video on it, um, usually should have the better time. So yeah, again, um, black should equalize. Interesting opening, etc., etc. All right, I got that out of the way. Let's actually jump into the analysis. Okay. Okay, so let's jump right into the heart of the video. Okay, so after bishop c4, black has a lot of um, options, a lot of moves at his disposal, all of which are interesting. Here are the moves we'll be taking a look at. Knight to f6, d5, queen to h4 check, knight to e7, server announcement. Knight to c6, <laughs> thank you server for interrupting me, d6, f5, c6, bishop e7, h6, and b5. Server announcement. Oh my gosh, server, how dare you? <laughs> um, so yeah, all of which um, are possible. Obviously, some are better than others, but um, yeah, th we'll be taking a look at all of these, more or less. Okay, so after bishop c4, We'll first take a look at knight to f6, uh, which I consider best. I think this is the easel easiest way for black to equalize. Uh, we'll take a look now. Um, so yeah, this is the most popular um, reply to bishop c4, which obviously threatens the e4 pawn. Okay, simple chess. <laughs> white obviously needs to defend this pawn, which explains um, white's most popular re reply, knight to c3, um, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Other than knight to c3, white can also try d3, but personally I have a psychological issue with this move, um, similar to the Grunfeld, where uh, black has the option, 95% um, of the time has the option of playing c5 and should play c5, trying to get counterplay, but then there's those you know, somewhat random lines where black can try c6, um, which I just really don't like. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I also like the term, not in the spirit of the opening. But of course, d3 is perfectly playable. After d3, black can try many moves. Um, d5, c6, or even um, d6. Or, um, the somewhat more interesting and probably easier to play, knight to c6. After knight to c6, the sample line could be... Bishop takes f4, d5. We have these trades... And um, queen check. to e2 check, bishop e6, which just which is just um, a very equal position. Okay, going back. Um, another option instead of knight to c3 again is e5. Um, but this um, isn't very good because of the very common motif d5, which is um, seen in the Italian game quite a bit. Um, and the problem is, after d5, white really doesn't have any great reply. Um, we could take a look now. Let's say white just calmly retreats the bishop. Bishop b3. Okay. Then knight to e4 is probably the most interesting line at black's disposal. Knight to f3. Bishop um, g4. When um, black is perfectly okay. For example, d3 can be met by knight to c5. Bishop takes f4, knight to c6, castle. We can take the bishop now and go bishop c5 check, which is absolutely perfectly, absolutely fine for black. <laughs> okay, um, so going back, instead of bishop e3, which is what we just looked at, white can also try bishop b 5 check. Black, of course, plays c6. White grabs the piece. We have this stuff, queen to e2. And we have this line, which at first looks a bit scary for black, but after queen Check. takes b5, which is um, something that white really should do to justify his opening, black has the very neat knight to c6 move. And now, if white, say, grabs the pawn, the knight to d4 is very, very strong. Note how it's covering these checking squares. And this knight takes c2 is a very annoying threat. And this is actually a very good line for black. Um, after knight to c6, let's say white also tries to take the pawn on g7. 
then, um, for instance, Black could just play Bishop takes G7 and have, you know, a very good game. Also possible is the far more, yeah, crazy check. Queen to H4 check. Um, so yeah, King to F1 um, can be met by uh, Bishop takes G7. Um, it should also be mentioned um, that after the check, White cannot play G3, which um, yeah it would be nice if it was possible, but yeah it isn't. <laughs> um, Black takes. Let's say White Queens. Check. G2 check. Um, a very common tactical motif happens, and uh, yeah, White is in serious trouble. Um, for example, you could try King to D1, but then Bishop check. G4. Server announcement. Which is obviously very good. Um, also, king to e2 can be met by queen to check. e4 check. Um, king to f2, and now we promote here. And with like 5 million mating ideas, white is dead. But a pretty um, cool looking um, four queens position. <laughs> you don't get that too often. Anyway, going back. So, um, after um, d5, one last option could be e takes f6 here, but then d takes c4, f takes, bishop takes, and um, let's say white tries the very normal knight to f3, then follows just simply castling, castle, and bishop f5, and black has absolutely nothing to complain about, and um, I'm sure many of us would rather be black here with a nice... Um, yeah, nice development. Notice how white doesn't have any pieces out. So yeah, so going back, the point I'm trying to make with all this is that after knight to f6, um, white really should play knight to c3. And um, after which the move c6 will be our main line. But of course there are alternatives we can look at. So knight to c6 is normal and logical. The, um, the line continues knight to f3. Uh, bishop b4, and um, yeah, one line could be um, castling, castling, e5, knight to g4, um, d4, d6, with um, interesting play for both sides. Obviously, black is trying to get out white center. White will try to defend it. Okay, going back. After knight to c3, another move is bishop b4 immediately. Um... So yeah, this is also very common in practice. Um, knight to f3 is usually the reply. After which, knight to c6. Um, another try here, um, which is a idea you see quite a bit sometimes in this line, um, when all the knights get developed early, is a very quick knight to d5, which is another idea white can try. Let's say black tries to grab the pawn, um, which, okay, black can obviously do. White castles, threatening rook to e1, so black castles... Um, d4, and this is actually quite nice for white. Um, c3 is coming, this um, pawn is going to fall. Um, this actually scores quite decently for white. Um, so, yeah, an interesting idea. So after knight to d5, um, actually more popular is the move castling. But then c3, bishop e7, and white can choose between the very solid d3 or the hyper-aggressive d4, both of which are actually possible and interesting. But okay, going back. Um, not that far. <laughs> After bishop c4, knight to f6, knight to f3, or c3, excuse me. Um, so yeah, what I consider easiest is c6, which is our main line, which simply intends d5. And the reason I like this move so much is that white is really helpless to prevent this. I mean, black is going to get d5 in, and after that break, black really never has anything to complain about. We'll take a look at um, the theory here. Um, yeah, what's really sad is white really has nothing better than the um, prophylactic bishop b3. Simply, you know, not letting black kick the bishop around. Um, so yeah, of course black plays d5 here. Uh, most common is taking on d5. And we reach this position after bishop d6, and white could choose between knight to f3 or knight g to e2, 
both of which are interesting, but of course Black has absolutely nothing to complain about, and yeah, I think uh, most people would take Team Black, but an interesting game will ensue. So yeah, moving on. Okay, so moving on. Um, instead of Knight to F6, we'll now look at, um, yeah, D5. So yeah, going back, after Knight to F3, D5 is considered a very good reply. Um, so if D5 is good here, shouldn't D5 be good after Bishop C4? And it is, um, of course. So after D5, um, Bishop takes D5 is obviously the main move. I was actually really surprised to find that some people actually play E takes D5 here, which I just find really, really strange. I mean, first of all, why why cripple your pawns? I mean, I don't just pawn structure in general is kind of, uh. <laughs> and the main point is that after E takes D5, check Queen to H4 check gains a huge, huge strength because with this pawn on D5, yeah. This bishop can't see the world, <laughs> and um, after king to f1, black's position is actually really, really nice. Um, so yeah, after um, king to f1, bishop d6 scores extremely, extremely well for black. Knight to f3, queen to h5, and although it is still murky, as um, is typical with most king's gambits, I think black should be preferred here. And um, yeah, d5 being somewhat weak. And the bishop, again, blocked by its own pawn. So yeah, going back, that explains why bishop takes d5 is more popular. And here, knight to f6 um, is most common. Please note, um, oops, not that. <laughs> Please check. note that queen to h4 check um, is not as good now. King to f1, okay, it's obviously playable. I mean, with bishop c4, queen to h4 check is always an idea, but it's not as good now um, with king to f1, and now knight to f3 is coming, um, and note that this bishop has huge, you know, reign, especially on f7, and uh, yeah, white usually gets his typical king's gambit play. So, going back, after bishop takes, um, black plays knight to f6, white's only real move here is the move knight to c3 which of course covers these um, important bishop and pawn, keeping material together. Um, so yeah, after which chances are really equal for both sides. Um, I think black is doing perfectly okay here. Um, so yeah, let's see um, some sample lines. Bishop b4, which is most popular in my database by a small margin, can be met by knight to f3. Black usually castles. I should mention that bishop takes c3, d takes c3, c6, um, going back. Um, this is very, very little for, um, is very little for black, and um, I'd actually prefer white here. But, um, okay, this is also possible, but it's very little for both sides. Um, bishop b4 was our line, sorry, <laughs> going a bit, going a bit, um, too far back. So black usually castles, but then white castles, c6, bishop c4, with equal chances in this line. Um, perhaps um, d3 is coming, um, yeah, supporting e4, and um, yeah, an interesting position aro um, arises here. Okay, going back. Also possible is knight takes d5 here, knight takes d5, bishop d6. But then white can really just play um, knight to f3, c6, knight to c3, and um, g5, which is a common idea in the king's gambit, can be met by d4 with double-edged play, maybe white intending e5 in some lines, castling, etc. Um, yeah, as a king's gambit player, I'd really prefer white here, but um, an interesting position nonetheless. Okay, so going back. Also possible is c6 immediately, but that could just be met by bishop b3, um, black can play, bishop c5, knight to f3, and um, yeah, black should probably play either knight b to d7, or I don't know, castles, which are very sad moves because they allow d4, but um, let's say black tries bishop g4, 
trying to prevent um, d4 and fight for the d4 square. But then there's a very common um, tactical shot Check. with bishop takes f7 Check. and knight here, which is um, very good for white. So yeah, but um, an interesting um, try by black anyways. Okay, moving on. Okay, so moving on. After bishop c4, another option is queen to h4, check. check. So yeah, when white doesn't play knight to f3 on move 3, obviously this check is always an option. So why not play it immediately? So we'll take a look at this now. So after the basically forced king to f1, okay, you don't want to play anything else, right? <laughs> king to e2 is a bit nutty. Um, yeah, black has... Uh, th um, three main moves, um, and they are d5, d6, or um, g5, which is, uh, yeah, pretty crazy. But before we get to that, let's first take a look at um, some alternatives. First, b5. So, I know what you're thinking, and that is, what is this crap? <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's what that was my first thought, too. But, um, okay, the idea behind it isn't totally illogical. Okay, it's not very good, but this is a very common idea from the Romantic era. Where, um, yeah, black sacrificed the B-pawn, tried to get a quick C6 and D5 in. But, okay, um, object, I mean, <laughs> in reality, it's not very good in this specific position. Okay, but it does make sense. The logic behind it is logical. Black is trying to get speedy development and try to catch um, the king in the center, take advantage of it. But okay, black, or excuse me, white, should really take the pawn. After which c6 is what many people, including me, thought the idea was. But it turns out after c6, bishop c4, white um, is doing quite well. As black can't play d5, you know, this is not working. So, yeah, if black can't play d5, you know, it really doesn't make sense to sacrifice the b-pawn, you know? <laughs> you know, black really hasn't gained much if he can't get b5, and now he's just, yeah, down a b-pawn. Um, here, the most popular moves are actually g, um, g5 or knight to f6. But if you're going to play g5 or knight to f6, why sacrifice the b-pawn? You know, so, that, um, yeah, that's probably the reason that b5 isn't so popular. But um, I wanted to point that out. It's kind of a cute motif. Okay, going back. Instead of b5, um, another alternative is knight to f6, uh, which is, okay, obviously always possible. Knight to f3, of course. Got to get um, that tempo. Queen to h5, knight to c3. And, uh, okay, this scores decently for white, although, of course, black can play this way. And um, perhaps d6 next, or bishop b4. You know, very logical play ensues, but um, okay, an interesting position. Going back, instead of knight to f6, there's knight to c6. Okay, knight to f3, queen to h5, and now d4. With one game I found continuing, d6, um, bishop takes f4, bishop g4, c3 supporting that center, castle long, knight b to d2, knight g to e7, um, where, you know, white has great development, you know, a really, really nice center, and, um, yeah, a bad king on f1. Very typical for the king's gambit, and, um, yeah, very, um, I believe we're going to have a position like this in one of the games later in the video. Okay, so going back... Um, instead of knight to c6, um, we'll first take a, we'll now take a look at one of the main options for black, and that's g5, which is uh, most popular in my database and the most sharpest move in the position. Um, and this actually scores pretty decently for black. Um, so yeah, white has to tread very carefully. Knight to c3 is needed. Um, so yeah, knight to f3 is possible, but it's very risky. Queen to h5, and this scores very, very, very well for black, um, winning a lot of games from this position. Um, white could try it, but very scary. Now, okay, instead of that, oops, after g5, um, white usually plays knight to c3, avoiding um, all that knight to f3 stuff. Okay, and now after this, bishop g7, um, d4, knight to e7, 
And, okay, this is still a theoretical position, if you could believe that, um, out of the three, um, bishop c4, king's gambit. And here, um, white really needs to find, um, the next move <laughs> to really stay in the game, really. Um, and that move is the very shocking g3 exclamation point. Very strong. Um, so, yeah. The point being, after f takes g3, which is the main line, king to g2, exclamation point. And all of a sudden, this king, okay... Server announcement. Thank you, sir, for interrupting me. Um, all of a sudden, this king is not looking so bad on g2. And um, believe it or not, black has to play queen to h6 here. H takes g3, queen to g6, and what a position. <laughs> black is up a pawn, but his development isn't looking so good. And um, white has a very nice center, and, you know, pieces out, etc. So black has a pawn, white has, you know, a good center, pieces out. Maybe the white king is potentially loose, but with black not having any pieces out, it's hard to take advantage of that. So yeah, very interesting position, and it, this actually score is pretty good for white. Um, as you can imagine, the draw rate in this line is very, very low. So if you get this position on the board, <laughs> um, yeah, that's probably going to be a decisive result, obviously. Okay. Um, so yeah, queen to g6, and now after queen to g6, just to go one step further, white usually plays knight to h3, or knight to f3, and, um, yeah, very crazy position ensues. I, um, we'll see a game that features this line later in the video. Okay, so moving on. Um, after king to f1, instead of g5, there's also d6, as was mentioned earlier. Um, so yeah, white usually starts with d4. Um, knight to f3 is also possible, but again, um, usually white um, tends to avoid that. Knight to f3, g5, it's very shaky. <laughs> uh, black usually um, with black usually gets um, pretty good play with an early knight to f3. So usually white plays d4. Okay, again, knight to f3 is possible, but okay, d4 is the main move. And um, okay, after d4, black has tried five main moves. Let's take a look at them all. Bishop e6 can be met by queen to d3. Okay, very uh, very common motif when black plays bishop e6, wanting to recapture with a queen. Um, okay, usually black plays knight to d7, knight to f3, queen to f6, um, knight to c3, with a very typical king's gambit play, with white having the center, nice lead development, but a weird king on f1. Okay, going back after d4. Um, another move is g5. Okay, this is a very common idea here, trying to hold on to that f pawn. And um, white has to really tread carefully because these early g5s are actually really, really dangerous, if you could believe that. Um, again, knight to c3. Again, knight to f3 is possible, but very, very dangerous. So usually white goes with knight to c3, and um, I think the easiest for black is c6. Then usually follows knight to f3. Okay, now. White should really get that piece out. Queen to h5, and, um, yeah, it's very, very dangerous. White needs to know what he's doing. h4 is needed, and h6. And here, white can choose between king to g1, which would probably be my choice, threatening this one, or even queen to d3, and, um, yeah, very sharp position with equal chances. Okay, so going back, oops, um, after d4, um, let's see, um, knight to c6 is the next option, after which knight to c3 again, um, bishop g4, queen to d3, g5, knight to d5 with double-edged play, um, again, this early g5, very dangerous, um, but yeah, okay, um, obviously very double-edged, um, going back, Bishop g4, queen to d3 usually leads to the previous line. So, okay, not a lot to look at there. And the last option, knight to f6, can be met by the immediate knight to f3. Queen to h5, knight to c3. And, um, okay, obviously this scores, um, not obviously, sorry. Um, this usually scores quite well for white, but again, double-edged. Um, so, yeah. If bishop g4, king to f2 is actually quite strong, protecting this rook, um, or even preparing rook to e1. Oops. Rook to e1 here. So, um, yeah. 
but interesting play nonetheless. This D6 line, uh, D6 connected with a, um, yeah, this D6 connected with an early G5 is actually really interesting. And um, if black knows what he's doing and white doesn't, this can easily lead to a quick win for black. But okay, moving on. Um, instead of D6, again, there is D5, uh, which is a common idea. We saw this um, earlier in the video, and I... Server. Announcement. And I um, labeled it as um, okay for white. There is, again, one tricky line here um, with g5. Again, this is just a very common move, and um, it's actually really dangerous for white, and it's very interesting. Um, and now both knight moves are possible, um, but they usually just transpose into each other. And this can also lead to lines covered earlier. Um, but okay, knight to c3, bishop d7, d4. Knight to e7, knight to f3, queen to h5, and then h4, h6. is very similar to stuff we saw earlier. Again, king to g1, queen to d3 are the options. Very double-edged. And um, again, knight to f3 usually just transposes after queen to h5, h4, bishop g7, um, knight to c3. And this usually just transposes to the line we already saw. Okay, wow. Let's uh, move on to the next uh, move. Or the next line. You know what I mean. <laughs> okay, so moving on to um, the next move, which is knight to e7. Um, this is actually a favorite move of mine against the knight um, 3, knight to f3 move order. Um, just to illustrate, knight to f3, knight to e7 is very interesting, and I believe really underrated. Um, this will get its own video, um, because, you know, it's a separate line altogether. But, um, just to illustrate, actually, uh, let's say d4, then d5 is the idea, and, you know, this sort of stuff is actually really, really interesting for black. So, the idea with um, knight to e7 is, is to support this d5 advance. So, going back... If white plays bishop c4 and black goes knight to e7, can this idea be executed, or what is the difference? Now, the difference between knight to f3 and bishop c4 is bishop c4 covers d5, and, um, yeah, that makes it very hard to get this d5 advance in. So now, before we go on, I want to mention that knight to f3 here leads to the 3 knight to f3 line, and this will get its own video, just to illustrate going back, um... Um, knight to e7, bishop c4, and we transpose. So this will get its own line. Bishop c4 is a really dull line. <laughs> it's kind of boring, to be honest. Not very good for white. Um, but okay, this will get its own video. Normally, again, white plays d4, and an interesting um, game ensues. But okay, bishop c4, knight to e7. So yeah, knight to f3 transposes to 3, knight to f3. So well, that will get its own video. So, um... And um, after knight to e7, knight to f3 isn't so good, and I think there's a much better way to take advantage of this move order. And that is knight to c3, which is, um, yeah, probably the reason that um, knight to e7 isn't that popular against bishop c4. The reason being, d5 isn't possible. You know, you can really just take it. And if d5 isn't possible, yeah, this knight on e7 is a bit iffy. Okay, this is still very playable. Um, so yeah, um, but before we, um, so after, um, knight to c3, if I could collect my thoughts a second, the main move is, um, here, let's get rid of that annoying arrow, knight to c3, the main move is c6, trying to force, um, not that, d5, uh, fail, fail arrows, <laughs> c6, trying to get d5 in, but before we move on to c6, let's take a look at alternatives, so again, c6 is the, uh, main move. But um, let's take a look at some other options. Knight to g6, um, which is a common idea in the 3 knight to f3 line. Um, white should now play knight to f3, which will transpose into the 3 knight to f3 line mentioned earlier, which will get its own video. Um, so yeah, another option is d6. But again, I have a psychological problem with this move, and that is if you're going to play knight to e7, you really want to get d5 in. You know, and, um, okay, d6 is obviously possible, but I really don't like it. d4, knight to g6, knight to f3. Uh, just a, looks like a really bad version of the 3 knight to f3 line. Okay, 
So yeah. Okay, going back. So after knight to c3, c6 is the main move. After which, um, white has some choices. Um, the main one being queen to h5, trying to stop this d5, right? White really wants to stop this, because again, as we've seen in previous lines, black gets c6, d5, black is usually equalizing. So white is trying to stop this. And again, okay, there's a main one threat. <laughs> also good to point out. So, black's main move is knight to g6, which is good. Knight to f3, bishop e7, and d4. And after this move, it appears black cannot play d5, but it turns out black can with the very shocking d5. And, um, yeah, <laughs> very crazy. E takes d5, and now the next crazy move, knight to d7, exclamation point. And, um, yeah, knight to f6 is coming. So here, white should take the pawn on c6 to justify his opening. And here black can really take with the pawn and then play knight to f6 next move. And this is actually a really interesting position um, with equal chances for both sides. Notice this queen is a bit, yeah, iffy on the king side. Not so many squares. There's a lot of lines where it can actually get trapped. So, um, but instead, black can even try to sacrifice <laughs> um, the b-pawn. Um, black can really try this. It's really crazy, right? Um... After which, c takes b7, bishop Friend takes departed. bishop takes b7, queen check. to b5 check, and queen to d7, and, um... Friend arrived. And, uh, yeah, this, this is actually really okay for black. It, it looks a bit iffy, but, yeah, for example, yeah, um, you could consider check. taking here castles, knight to b6, for example. This is just a sample line. Bishop b3... Castles long, and there's already a threat with bishop takes f3 and um, rook takes d4. So yeah, a very crazy line. I, I think it's pretty funny that black can play this way. But okay, going back. Um, going back, this is just one line. Going back. Another option is queen to f3. But um, yeah, okay, again, trying to stop this um, d5 move, adding more... Um, fire, <laughs> you could say, to that d5 square. Um, the problem I have with this move is, really, the knight belongs on f3, right? But, um, okay, white can really try this. Black, okay, responds with knight to g6, d4, and a very strong bishop b4 is good. Again, fighting for that d4, um, d5, excuse me, square. Um, so, yeah, obviously, black really wants to get this in, again, which would equalize. Knight g to e2... And a very interesting idea is knight to h4 here. Okay, obviously queen takes f4 is met by this. Check. Okay, oops, here <laughs> and here. Um, so th that can't be played. Queen to f2, and all of a sudden there isn't um, this. Um, yeah, queen on f3 striking at d5, and black can really execute this d5 break, which we know is equalizing. Another option is queen to h5. Okay, again, mate threat. And again, trying to fight for this d5 square. But then, um, yeah, <laughs> black can again play this anyways, as e takes d5 is met by knight takes g2. Check. Um, king to f2, and now if um, yeah, if black knows what he's doing, um, then knight to e3 is very very strong. And um, okay, yeah, I don't think anybody wants to play this with white. For example, check. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, with rook to e8 coming. I don't know. Maybe you could get away with this. I mean, it's very scary. Maybe something like rook to f1 and trying to like get this king around here. But um, very scary <laughs> um, for white. That poor white king. Okay, going back here. Um, another option being d4, but this doesn't uh, try to stop d5, and black can really play it, which again, equalizing. e takes d5, knight takes d5, with um, an eventual bishop e6 is just absolutely okay for black. Again, if black gets that d5 advance in, he almost always is equalizing. Or knight to f3, but again, that doesn't stop d5, and um, yeah, 
bishop b3 can be met by bishop e6, which is absolutely okay for black. So, um, yeah, eventually knight to g6, and this should equalize for black. But, uh, okay, this knight to e7 is always an interesting, um, yeah, a very interesting line. Okay, let's move on to the next um, line. Okay, so the next move I want to take a look at is, um, yeah, three knight to c6, after which... Um, there's just one line I would like to mention. Obviously, knight to c6 is a very flexible move, and um, as you can imagine, this can easily transpose into um, yeah, various variations that we've al already seen. But um, there is, again, one line I want to mention. Knight to f3, which again, can easily transpose to other things. However, here, at this moment, black could try the immediate g5. And what I think is pretty cute is that with this move order, white can reach a position that is very relatable to the Mozio Gambit out of the King's Gambit 3 Knight to F3. For example, Castle G4, Knight to C3 takes takes, is very similar to the Mozio Gambit. Now, going back, what is the Mozio Gambit? That is after Knight to F3, G5, Bishop C4, G4, castles, takes, takes. As you can see, we reach, reach a position that is very similar to what we saw. I think it's kind of cute how, um, yeah, from the three bishop c4 move order, we can reach a position very similar by transposition. So, yeah, if you want to catch your <laughs> opponent in the Museo Gambit, this could be a clever move order trick. Okay, moving on to the next line. Okay, so, yeah, the next line, let's see, is 3d6, and, um, yeah, to be honest, I feel that black is going to play a setup with, um, d6, then I feel like he should do it immediately, just to see how white arranges his pieces. Um, from this position here, let's, if white plays knight to f3, we, um, get a position from the Fisher defense of the 3 knight to f3 king's gambit. So what do I mean by that? Instead of bishop c4, um, d6, this is the Fisher defense of the king's gambit. And here, announcement. And here, if white plays bishop c4, which is sort of a, yeah, sort of a dull <laughs> sideline, um, as you can see, we reach a transposition into um, this. So we're not going to look at this. Um, the Fisher defense will get its own video, um, as you can imagine. So after bishop c4, d6, we'll take a look at an alternative to knight to f3. So after, um, yeah, um, d6, white could try d4, which is a bit crazy. I feel like, you know, knight to f3 preventing the check is best, but d4 is obviously a common idea here. So now check. black usually gives the check, king to f1, and here black sometimes tries the very typical bishop e6, trying to get rid of white's strong bishop on c4. White's most common reaction to this is queen to d3, um, wanting to recapture with the queen. And, um, yeah, black usually plays knight to d7, knight to f3, queen to f6, and this can even transpose into lines we saw earlier. As you can see, it's a very typical, um, or very, uh, a pawn structure that we saw earlier. But, um, yeah, knight to c3 now, and we reach this position with, again, typical, sharp, king's gambit play. Okay, moving on to the next line. So, yeah, the next line I want to take a look at is f5. And, um, so I know what you're thinking. Once again, what is this crap? <laughs> um, yeah, but believe it or not, this has actually been tried multiple times, more than you would think. And, um, yeah, as surprising as you would find it, it is very hard for white to take advantage of such a move in this position. Obviously, it's very odd, right? Playing f5, you know, <laughs> maybe it's a psychological strike, right? You're going to play f4, I'll play f5, you know. We'll both weaken our structures. But, um, again, it's really hard to take advantage of this. Um, and it is a totally illogical, right? f5, what does it do? It strikes at the center. You know, and, okay, let's see. Let's take a look at some of the white replies here. Okay. So, let's see. Queen to e2 
can be met by queen to h4 check, which is actually really, really annoying. You know, it's just a really, really annoying move. For example, queen to f2, check. we have um, this, and f takes e4, and yeah, I don't know about you, but I feel like these pawns are actually strong rather than weak, and uh, black has a good position. King to f1, or king to d1 for that matter, going back, either way, can be met by um, f takes e4, if I can make the move, oh, I have to play something, <laughs> fail, um, f takes e4, queen takes e4, bishop e7, and wow, black doesn't look so bad, what's the king doing on d1, and black can proceed with like normal developing moves, you know, d5 or d6, you know, and proceed with normal stuff. Um, yeah, it looks actually really pleasant for black. <laughs> and, um, uh, okay. Bishop e7, let's say knight to f3, queen to h5, or even queen to f6. With, um, yeah, this idea maybe. Is actually really annoying. You know, c6 is coming, and d5. So queen to e2 is obviously not the way to go. Um, oops, I went a two bit far back, sorry. <laughs> um, f5. Another um, a attempt to try to take advantage of this is knight to c3. If I can move, there we go. <laughs> um, then queen to h4 check. Check. Yet again is um, really annoying. King to f1 can be met by taking on e4. Knight takes e4, and again bishop e7 with knight to f6 coming appears to be absolutely okay for black. So going back. Um, so yeah, e takes f5 is the next logical, um, thought with this threat, you know, um, but black could just play knight to f6 with one sample line being knight to c3, queen check. to e7, check, queen to e2, knight to c6, knight to f3, and I mean, honestly, I don't see anything that black has to complain about. I think, um, black can equalize here with not much trouble. But, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> so you can kind of tell that this is, this, it's really hard to get anything, you know, had, anything to take advantage of this F5 move. It just seems to be playable, and um, white will have to continue with something normal. Also, you could consider E5, but then a lot of moves come to mind. The one I prefer, the one that I like the most, is D5, which, um, as you know, D5 in a lot of positions is an equalizer, and I think here it's no different. Perhaps um, white should en passant, but then bishop takes, and knight to f6 coming, queen to e7. These kinds of ideas, black seems to be um, doing quite fine. So maybe, <laughs> if you're ever adventurous, maybe this f5 idea could be an interesting idea. But um, yeah, let's stick to uh, more normal moves. Moving on. <laughs> Okay, and now let's just finish the, um, this off with the honorable mentions, right? Okay, c6, um, the move c6, usually just transposes into the knight to f6 line that we saw earlier. Okay, so other than c6, another um, option we haven't looked at is bishop e7. When um, knight to f3 is basically the only move, which leads to the Cunningham defense via the three knight f3 move order, which again will get its own video. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Okay, so after bishop c4, another option is h6, um, which again, usually transposes to the classical variation of the king's gambit, something like knight to f3, um, yeah, g5, bishop c4, bishop g7, castles, h6, something like this, it usually just transposes into that, which again, will get its own video. Um... After three, bishop c4. And last, and probably least, is b5. <laughs> and it wasn't good before, and it's even worse now. Bishop takes b5 is really good for white, and, um, yeah. White should really just take it. Queen to h4, check. King to f1. And, uh, leads to a line we looked at earlier. With knight to f3 coming, and d4. Typical king's gambit play. Scores very well for white, and, um, yeah, b5 is not the way to handle this. But, you know, in the spirit of the Romantic era, we got to give it a mention. Anyways, so that has been, you know, a very rough, 
hopefully pretty um, well said um, overview of the three bishops, c4, king's gambit. I hope you got at least a little something out of that. But now let's take a look at some games that feature this uh, bishop c4 yeah, opening. Okay, let's move on to those games now. Okay, so the first game of 10 that I'd like to look at and share with you guys. Okay, so the first game it um, features none other than Bobby Fischer, um, who surprisingly played the King's Gambit um, semi semi often. Um, this game was played in 1968, and the black player was Minnick. I also want to mention there will be links in the description for each of these games, and you could go you know do your own investigation of who the players were, etc., etc. Um, take a look at some other people's comments about the games, so make sure to check that out. But anyways, let's jump right into this game. All right, so we reach Bishop C4. All right, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Not really. It's the topic of this video. Okay. So um, Bobby Fischer's opponent choosing um, Knight to E7, Knight to C3, C6. Okay. So we have this line, Knight to F3, D5. So Knight to F3 allowed this D5 break. Um, okay, I've mentioned before that I feel like if Black gets D5, C6, D5 at any point, then, um, yeah, Black usually equalizes. And I feel like it, I still hold true to that. Bishop B3, and here I think Black made, yeah, somewhat of an inaccuracy. And I feel like it gives White what he wants. Black took on e4, which I really, I don't like. Um, I feel like bishop e6, getting pieces out was much better. Um, I, I honestly feel like if black is going to play like this, black really needs just to get his pieces out and get developed quickly. Um, objectively, um, d takes e4 isn't a bad move, but I, I just, yeah, I don't really like it. But okay, knight takes e4. And knight to d5, which I find even more strange. Um, ludicrous. Why put the knight where it can be kicked with c4? But first queen to e2 was played, which is a very nice move on many levels. It has a very deep point and a very direct point. The direct point is that there's a mate in one threat. <laughs> if you study your tactics, you should um, study your tactics. You should be able to uh, find the threat pretty easy. Um, let's say bishop f5. There's main one with the very cheeky. Checkmate. Knight to f6, double check and mate. So yeah, that's very cute. The main point, though, however, is not only the mate threat, but after the semi-forced bishop e7, that notice how this knight no longer has the square to retreat to. And now c4 is really annoying. First of all, black doesn't want this. Check. For obvious reasons. These are just ugly, ugly pawns. Um, so, black played knight to c7, then d4. You know, very simple play, but very good. Simple and good. Just getting a nice center, and after, castles, bishop takes f4. Just take a look at white's position. Look at these pieces, just brilliant. And now white has options of castling either way. Okay, knight to e6. Fisher played bishop e3, covering this pawn. Check. Bishop b4 check, but king to f2, very, very nice. Um, just saying, okay, I don't mind moving um, the king, and we'll see why in a second. Knight to d7, c5, which is a nice move, cutting off the bishop, and um, yeah, very good. Knight to f6, check. white took. I don't even think, um, yeah, you shouldn't let black get here. <laughs> check. So takes, takes, very simple. And rook to f1. So now white is going to manually castle. And, um, yeah, okay. Which happens soon. Knight to f4. Okay, that knight had to go. Not much to look at. Queen takes g3, kicking it again. Queen to h6 and king to g1. So obviously you can see white was able to uh, manually castle and has a pretty decent position. Black tried bishop h3. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I wonder if this was sort of a trick or, um, I mean, white um, playing like this, allowing bishop h3. Maybe white suspected black would go into this. Bishop h3 isn't very good, and we'll see why. Um, white has the very nice knight to, knight to e5, and, uh, yeah. Okay, let's see what black played here. Black played bishop takes f1. 
somewhat better, but still ultimately losing was Queen to D2. But it was a tad more tricky. White would have to find um, Queen takes, takes, and now the very strong Rook to F3, which is not so easy. The very strong defensive move, making sure there's no Bishop E3 check. And very soon, um, yeah, F7 will become an issue. And, um, yeah, okay. Obviously, white has a very nice position. But, okay, going back, that wasn't found. Black grabbed the material. Um, white recaptured. And now bishop d2 with this idea. Trying to um, get counterplay. But, however, rook to f3, very similar to the line we saw a minute ago. Uh, was found and um, okay now there's no check just because it can be captured and um, okay white is just winning rook to d8 was tried knight takes f7 okay this is all collapsing everything's losing rook takes and here Fisher played a move and um, the black player resigned pause now if you want to try to find this move um, it's pretty nice very simple not a huge combination but just a move that kills the game on the spot and um, yeah, cause resignation. So pause now if you want to try to find it. Okay, so I'm going to reveal the move. The move that was played and is winning is Queen to E7 and Black resigned as pretty much everything is losing. Okay, uh, Queen here. Check. Winning. Um, if you go here, there's probably a bazillion quick wins. Um, what's the simplest? Probably Bishop Check. takes here. Checkmate. Is simple. Or here. Check. Checkmate. It's also simple. So yeah, um, going back to the end position, yeah, obviously Black is getting crushed and Black resigned. So a very nice game um, played by Fisher in 1968. Um, so yeah, um, pretty cool to see a game that Fisher played with the King's Gambit. And uh, alright, let's move on to the second game. Okay, on to game two. This game is a really great example of getting all the positives of the king's gambit and being able to get the king into a better spot after being forced to F1. The white player in this game was none other than Vasily Ivanchuk, also known as Chucky, <laughs> for um, the chess fans out there, including me. Um, his opponent was Pedrad Nikolik. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Russian names. Um, was played in the fifth individual European chess championship. So let's see how Ivan Chuck handles the three bishop c4 king's gambit. So, all right, we reached this position. I want to mention again, this is the European chess championship, and Ivan Chuck is playing this three bishop c4 king's gambit. That's why um, I think Chucky has so many fans just pulling out these crazy openings for even um, pretty high events. Um, so yeah, okay, let's move on. Um, check. Queen h4 check was chosen. d6, d4, okay, this line. And queen to d3, which is the normal response to, um, yeah, uh, bishop e6. So let's see. Um, black played um, knight to f6. Knight to f3. And now queen to g4, which is a bit strange. Um... Because on on um, g4, white can sometimes get kicks in with knight to uh, or h3, and sometimes if this pawn isn't here, say it goes to d5 in some lines, knight to e5 can come with tempo and be a bit annoying. So um, for this reason, um, normally black players choose queen to h5, having the whole rank um, under control or um, at least beyond that rank. But okay. There's nothing um, seriously wrong with queen to g4. It's just a bit strange. Knight to c3. Bishop e7. h3. So we see queen to g4. The queen here getting kicked. Queen to g6. And now bishop takes f4. Now notice again. Just beautiful pieces and beautiful center. Look at that. Just take a look at that. I mean that's just like. That's what you want right. When you teach beginners. What kind of center you should be aiming for. This is what you show them right. Just bishops and knights. All perfectly developed. Okay, but there is still a problem as this king on f1 is very iffy. <laughs> Alright, so let's see how Ivan Chuck fixes that issue. Black castled. And, um, alright, rook to e1, very normal. Getting pieces out. Knight to h4, bishop h2. Check. Okay, and black forced this trade in. 
Knight to e2 was chosen, okay, giving the queen the boot. Queen to g6, knight to f4, very nice. Queen to h6 was chosen, and g3. Now notice, after this move, white has this beautiful square g2, and all of a sudden, his position looks very, very nice. And black really didn't do anything wrong either. Black was playing very normal moves, top choices of the engine, you know, those kinds of stuff. And still, white's position ended up being pretty good. Knight to d7, king to g2. Again, very nice position for white. Knight to b6, and now we have the trade. Okay. Takes, rook to f1, and... Yeah, c5 striking at the center, and d5 um, advancing. Also possible was c3, you could play that. But um, d5 is more aggressive and more direct. And, um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Black stacked the exchange for some unknown reason. I think um, perhaps Black was getting a bit nervous. I don't know if this was time pressure or something. Something happened, and Black decided to stack the exchange, which is a bit shocking. But, um, okay, it's still, it's complicated, but ultimately not working. Of course, um, white took. Going back, instead of, um, the exchange sack, e5 was slightly better, I mean, not slightly better, was better. <laughs> um, or even you could try c4, something like queen to d2, and then e5. Um, this was a much better try for black. It's not very fun as, um, yeah, knight here is, um, pretty annoying. Or even, um, you could even try queen to e2, it's probably even better, something like this. Oops, not that, sorry. <laughs> knight here, of course, and yeah, this is a very annoying knight, but black can try to fight, you know, in these kinds of positions. Going back, yeah, sacking the exchange just isn't working, and Ivan Chuck really shows how to, um, yeah, handle this. Okay, took, queen takes takes on e6. Okay, you don't want to allow... you got to get some files open. <laughs> don't want to let that pawn get to e5. Rook to f8. b4, exclamation point. Which is very pretty, but um, even simpler was um, knight to h2. Right? Just very simple. Trading these rooks. If queen to g5 check, then queen to g3 is defending. Note that this knight, rook, queen, they're all defending the king. There's no attack here, and white will be simply up in the exchange. But okay, b4 was even prettier, and, you know, honestly, it just looks nicer. <laughs> Very nice move. Um, so why not? Um, rook to f6. And now the very, very nice queen to b5. And, yeah, if now rook to g6... And king to h1 it is perfectly safe, and black has no move. Also note that let's say black plays a nothing move, for example. Let's say c4. Then white has the ultra-sharp knight to g5 exclamation point, and that's going to be gg. Of course, queen takes here, check. queen check. Checkmate. It's something that black doesn't want. <laughs> so, rook to g6 isn't working, so black grabbed the pawn. Very nice. White grabbed on c5. Bishop h4 trying to get aggressive and say, you know, um, yeah, <laughs> after the takes, this king is a bit open. But, okay, white is in, um, yeah, white is perfectly safe. And there's actually a lot of ways um, that white can defend here, but I think Ivan Chuck finds the simplest. Um, the computer points out that... Um, C takes B6 here is winning, and that white can defend, yada, 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 which is true. But uh, the move chosen is just very simple, much much more human, and that's queen to B3. Intermediate move, getting the queen ready to swing to G3, pinning the rook, and this threat on the knight is still there. D5 was played, and now taking the knight. Notice how the queen now defends uh, G3 and the pawn, and after the check... You know, um, king to h2 is perfectly safe. Or queen to g5 check. check. Queen to g3 is perfectly safe as well. So a very nice, um, yeah, just a very nice game in general by um, Chucky. Very good example of getting all the advantages of the king's gambit. And then, uh, you know, fixing the one issue white has. And that's the king. Getting it to a good position and... Um, trying to um, go from there and try to outplay your opponent. So yeah, very GG. I like that one. Okay, moving on to game three. 
Okay, so moving on to Game 3, the white player was none other than Morozovic, and um, the black player was Anand. Um, this game was played in Moscow in 1995. Um, so yeah, this game is a really good example of um, how to play against this opening. So far we've only looked at white playing you know, really well, you know, demonstrating the dangerousness of the um, King's Gambit. But here is a really good example of how black should respond. Um, one of the simplest ways of handling it. But um, as we'll see, even with <laughs> such a good um, position out of the opening, white's attacking chances can still be very dangerous, as we'll see. But okay. Again, um, take note of Black's opening here, as I think it's a very, very good example of um, how to handle the three bishop c4 king's gambit. What's also nice about this game is that it's um, very simple, <laughs> very good to comment on, because, you know, there's not a whole lot to analyze. It's all pretty clear cut. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So we get the um, king's gambit, three bishop c4. And knight to f6. So, okay, a non choosing, probably the best, um, yeah, probably the simplest response to 3 bishop c4. Knight to c3, c6, as we saw earlier. And bishop b3, d5. And we have this line. And a non choosing bishop b4, which is a bit more aggressive than bishop d6. But bishop b4 is very interesting, of course. Um, Nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just a bit more, yeah, aggressive. Knight to f3, castles, castles. And I think um, Anand chooses probably the best practical try, and that's just to grab the knight, damaging those pawns. Queen to c7, very simple. Just try to put pressure on that um, backwards pawn, getting um, the queen to a good square. Queen to e1 which is a dual purpose move of course covering c3 and uh, maybe queen to h4 knight to c6 and queen to h4 so we do see this idea okay and knight to e7 which is a very nice move um, first of all it opens up an attack on this pawn again and also the ideas of knight to g6 or knight to f5 are in the position where black is looking to be um, looks to be in very good shape and again look how black you know has yeah very simple um, yeah very nice and easy to play position knight to g6 knight to f5 this bishop can go to e6 or f5 or maybe even g4 you know it's it's very um, yeah very nice very um, various ways of developing pieces and nice play on the c3 pawn so again, I think this is a very good example of conducting the opening. <laughs> okay, but let's see how it went. White, of course, grabbed the pawn, and queen takes c3. Bishop d2, and queen went back, and knight to e5. So again, I think black's position is um, pretty nice. Um, I think black um, has nothing to complain about out of the opening. But as you can see, there's some little ideas here, you know. <laughs> White, White has those little murky King's Gambit, you know, counterplay ideas. For example, Rook takes f6 is in the position at all times. And also maybe the idea is c3, bishop c2, and these ideas. And you can kind of see how White can slowly start to get a little something going. Okay, Black tried knight to f5, which is a very um, good move. Probably the yeah, best move in the position. Queen to f4, and bishop e6. So getting pieces out. Okay. So bishop e4. Um, yeah, this is obviously a position where white can't, you know, sit and wait and consolidate and all that. You really have to get on hyper-aggressive mode, get um, the initiative going, because if black gets, you know, a couple moves, he has, you know, a very nice position, probably even winning. You know, just with his nice um, e4 square, really. <laughs> okay, so rook to c8. Saving the rook, putting it on its best square. And g4. Again, hyper-aggressive. You gotta get that initiative going. Knight to d6. White got his last piece into the game with, um, yeah, rook to e1. And knight to e4. And here's, I think, a good position to take stock. What has black gone? Black, you know, has a very nice development, right? All his pieces are out. Um, and more importantly, he has this very nice e4 square. 
Um, yeah, White's King maybe isn't looking so hot. You know, not <laughs> not a whole lot of pawn cover, and it can easily backfire. But again, okay, White, you know, still has these murky ideas with um, the open files and such. Let's see how this game continued. So C4, which is a nice shot, um, but ultimately not working, and Anand plays the best moves here. D takes C4, Bishop C2, which was the idea, trying to, again, get on this diagonal. Knight to F6. Okay, so this move is not deadly, but it's also not best. After Knight to F6, White will get a lot of counterplay, as we'll see. There was a really nice move here that um, Morozovic missed, and that is Queen to B6. When White really doesn't have any good reply, the bishops obviously hit... So, for example, bishop takes e4 can be met by queen takes b4, and black has nothing to complain about. If rook takes e4, trying to be very tricky, right? This sort of idea. Um, black again, oops, sorry, <laughs> can take on um, b4 again, you know, just to avoid complications, and black again has nothing to complain about. Note the weak um, back, um, the weak white king, if I could collect my thoughts again. Um, also note this C-pawn isn't very bad. Um, so yeah, going back. Um, after bishop c2, if queen to b6, if let's say um, white tries to save the bishop with um, bishop a3, then black can really grab the pawn on d4 and is obviously winning. So going back, queen to b6 would have been a very nice uh, move if um, yeah Anand had found it. Instead, knight to f6 was played, which I mentioned isn't bad, um, but it allows white a lot of counterplay, as we'll see. g5, so yeah. And here, one, <laughs> obviously the knight has various retreating squares, um, but these are the main candidates, right? And um, I'll, I'll say this, one move loses and one move wins <laughs> for black, or maybe not wins, but it's, it's at least complicated and black can fight. One move loses, one move is complicated. The move that was played was knight to h5, um, and this actually loses to a very nice tactical shot, very nice tactical <laughs> alertness, you could say, as we'll see in a moment. Better was knight to d5, and um, yeah, putting the knight in the center, obviously getting this idea in. The problem with this move is that it's still very complicated. White could try queen to h4, and all of a sudden, you can kind of see there's all these ideas. Um, yeah. <laughs> these sorts of ideas as counterplay, and it's actually very, very dangerous. Um, with computer analysis, it seems that black can really, um, yeah, defend this. But, yeah, for a human, it's very scary. But still, I think this is what black should have gone for. And um, the reason is is that after knight to h5, again, black is losing for what Morozovic played. So the move that was played here, very nice, is queen to f3, which is the downside of knight to h5. Notice how this knight doesn't really have any great squares, and the only way to defend it is g6, and that's what Anand played. However, after this move, there's, again, a very nice tactical shot. If you have your, you know, tactical thinking caps on, you could probably already sense the sacrifices. So if you want to pause and try to find these nice moves, um, go for it. But okay, the move that was played in the game by Morozovic is knight takes g6, exclamation point, and yeah, very, very nice. h takes g6, and now bishop takes g6. Very, very nice tactics, and um, yeah, white is winning. Black grabbed, rook takes, and notice how all of a sudden all these pieces have liberated. You know, every piece is extremely active. And um, this king is really lacking defenders. Okay. Queen to f7 was tried, which is probably the best, you know, attempt at defending. But again, um, after the move, queen to d5, um, it is all over for black. Um, the move that was tried defensively was knight to f5, which again is probably the only, you know, real try. But again, one last final blow. Pause the video if you want to try to find um, the crushing move. But um, the move that was played in the game was Rook takes f5 and um, Black resigned as, you know, everything is losing for Black. 
let's say g takes f5, then g6, and um, white is completely winning. Or queen takes f5, runs into check, check mate. This um, mating motif, and um, yeah, <laughs> that would be gg. So going back after rook takes f5, um, Anand resigned. A very nice game by Morozovic showing um, that even with um, Black playing the quote-unquote correct reply, <laughs> um, the standard reply to uh, this three bishop c4 king's gambit, that white's resources are still out there and can still be very dangerous. But um, yeah, again, I want to take note going back, say... Uh, Let's see, go here to this position. I think up to here, Black played, you know, a very, um, a very good game and um, a very good example of how Black um, should handle this. You know, um, three bishop c4. I don't think any of us would complain having the Black position here. But again, still dangerous. Those King's Gambit attacks can really happen out of the blue. Okay, let's move on to the next game. Okay, so moving on to game four. This is just a really quick game that I wanted to show, um, showing how black can just um, enter the three knight to f6 line and um, just get pieces out and try to equalize and go from there. Um, admittedly, this is sort of a, yeah, not an extremely exciting game, but it does show how black can, yeah, equalize against the three bishop c4. Um, not get an edge necessarily, but just equalize and, you know, fight for the whole point or half a point after that. And um, it's also a good example of how not to get blown off the board, <laughs> so to say, you know, um, with this three bishop c4, king's gambit. The white player was Nigel Short, and the black player was none other than Karpov. So let's see how Karpov handles the three bishop c4, king's gambit. I think this is a really good example, um, another really good example of how black can try to play against this opening. All right, let's jump right into it. So we have this three bishop c4, of course, c6, knight to c3, and knight to f6. So we transpose and to um, the main line of the knight to f6 line, bishop e3, d5. And we reach the main position after a couple more moves. I'll skip ahead. Bishop e6, castles, castles, and knight to e5, and knight to c6. So just a very um, yeah natural development from black. Again, he's not trying to hold on to material. He's just getting every piece out and um, going from there. So yeah, um, a very um, nice way of handling the opening. Typical of Karpov, playing really solidly, not holding on to material, but just equalizing. And, um, okay, the game continued for a little bit, but ultimately, after some moves, bishop e7, queen to d3, a5, just normal development, we had the trade of dark squared bishops, and knight to a4, black has absolutely nothing to complain about. He has perfect control over the c5 square, and um, a couple more moves were played. Queen to d6, there's not a whole lot going on. C3, G6, and uh, Bishop C2. And here, um, I actually saw an interesting um, comment. Uh, someone proposing the line, Bishop F5, Rook takes F5, takes, takes, Queen to G6, and now Queen to F2. Um, the person labeled as interesting, but um, yeah, I don't think Karpov, of all people, would go for this. Maybe it's playable, but um, <laughs> I don't think Karpov wants to risk um, any king um, issues. And what he played is probably simpler and better. Just rook f to e8, you know, getting on this open file. And a couple more moves. We had the queen trade. And we reached this end game where absolutely nothing is going on. Rook to f4, covering this knight as well. The bishop's on it too. So yeah, a couple more moves. Getting on this um, d5 point, which is only, it's, which is really Black's main weakness. But um, as in a lot of IQPs, um, yeah, Black is in perfectly okay shape. A couple more, a couple more moves were played, but ultimately, just skipping ahead. Check. We reach this uh, bishop endgame where there's really honestly nothing happening. I'm just Check. fast forwarding a bit. And b4, note how the pawn and the bishop cover these squares so the king can't enter. And we just have a couple more trades. 
at Bishop F1, and here the game was agreed drawn. I don't know who offered the draw, probably, um, yeah, White, and it was accepted. The king is tied down to this pawn, and um, the king can't move. So it's, it's a pretty clear draw, but I wanted to show this game because it's a very good example of black sort of neutralizing the opening and um, holding the half point without much difficulties. Okay, let's move on to game five where it's sort of a <laughs> the exact, exact um, opposite of this game where, yeah, there's basically fireworks happening everywhere. Okay, let's move on. Okay, all right, game five. Um, let's have some romantic era fun now. Um, we saw, yeah, a couple games where Black has played really solidly and um, probably equalized without much difficulty. But let's see what happens in the yeah, <laughs> in the 1900s where um, yeah, Black kind of goes crazy and so does White and yeah, a typical romantic era game. So yeah, let's have some romantic era fun. This game was played in 1895. All right. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the names. I'm sure they're known names, but... Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are known players, but I'm not going to try to pronounce them, as per usual, because my name pronunciation is awful, <laughs> as um, many people know. Okay, so Bishop E7. Um, yeah, very... Um, yeah, an abnormal um, way of handling it, but surprisingly very playable. D4. I think um, White should really play Knight to F3 here and transpose to... Uh, yeah, quieter line of the Cunningham defense, but, um, okay, d4 is okay, typical romantic era, knight to f6, e5, and knight to e4, and, um, okay, this is still an interesting position here, and here, this is the beginning where white begins to go crazy, and, um, it's typical romantic era madness, and, um, yeah, <laughs> so, what does white play? Bishop d5, which is simply a horrible move, all right? I'm being blunt. It's just awful. Um, yeah, which basically encourages black to go into a winning line that wins material. And, uh, yeah, it's just an awful position for white. Check. And black goes for it. Bishop, um, e, um, bishop h4, check. And, again, note how this bishop has moved twice, <laughs> violating opening rules. So king to f1. And now knight to f2, and, um, okay, white basically invited this, which is good for black. Um, I don't want to make it out to sound like it isn't. So, yeah, first of all, note the king, which is my first thought. What, what on earth is it doing on f1? And this fork. I mean, <laughs> very simple. Queen to h5. Okay, typical romantic era. There's a fork. You respond with a maiden one threat. And, um, yeah... In this position exactly, Black just needs to find one good defensive move, and he's winning. And that's just g6. Black didn't play this and didn't find it. The move that was um, chosen was castling, which is just atrocious. <laughs> but, um, yeah, g6, and White would have to move the queen. h6, or maybe f3, I don't know. But then Black can really just grab the rook, and he's in perfectly good shape. But, um, of course, going back... Black didn't find this, and played, yeah, not a bad move, but g6 would have won quicker. And that's castling, which is just, uh, <laughs> not a bad move, but um, it allows white to justify his opening play a bit. Still, probably black is preferred here, but after knight to f3, it becomes a bit more complicated. Um, yeah. So after knight to f3, black would have to go into... A line that he didn't do. The best here is to grab the rook, but then after queen to h4, we have these trades, and um, okay, that's equal chances as this knight on h1 is very iffy, and and in a lot of lines it actually gets trapped in the corner. But here's one interesting attempt for um, Black: g5, knight to f3, g4. Okay, so this is like a last-ditch effort to save this knight. <laughs> and it's such a wild line. Okay, so um, g4, knight to e1, and now g3, trying to get this knight, not there, here. Um, after which, white takes the pawn on f4, and here, black has the opportunity to try to save his knight <laughs> in a very um, funny way. Knight to f2, and now bishop takes g3. And, um, okay, now knight to d1. <laughs> what a crazy line. Um, after that, of course, black is threatening this fork. 
So white has to play um, bishop f4, covering this square. But then knight takes b2. And, um, yeah, for the computer says this is playable. And, yeah, I don't know any human that would want to go in into this sort of line. But um, after I move, like, bishop h6, it is very, very ugly for black. Maybe playable, but very ugly. Rook to e8 can be tried, but then knight to c3, and these sorts of ideas start to crop in the position. You could also maybe potentially see a rook lift idea, like this. And, um, yeah, it's just not a lot of fun for the black king. The computer says it's play playable, but, um, yeah, very dangerous. <laughs> okay, going back to um, the main game. After knight to f3, as you can imagine... Black didn't go into this and play g6, which is just like, uh... <laughs> Basically what this move is doing, it's forcing, in a way, um, queen takes h4 and w sort of leads into a line that we just looked at. But instead, white was wanting more. Again, black castled, basically into it. And um, again, white just wants more and played queen to h6. Okay, so, black grabbed the rook now. And white grabbed the bishop. Okay. And c6, which is, um, yeah, it's, it's losing. But, um, yeah, it's not like there's anything better anyways. Um, <clears throat> the most uh, ironic thing here <laughs> is that white now totally misses the win and even gives the edge to black. I think simplest here is just bishop b3 and white has a very nice position, really, with, um, Bishop takes f4, bishop g5, these kinds of ideas. Just very simple. Instead, white, yeah, kind of goes crazy again. And grabs the bishop, um, the pawn immediately. Which leaves the bishop hanging. And, um, yeah, the problem is, you know, yeah, black finds this move. C takes d5, and, yeah, white goes bonkers again. <laughs> and plays knight to f5. And, um, all of a sudden it is black who is better. And, um... Black even finds the correct defense to this move. Black grabs the knight, bishop g5, and f6. So black even finds this very nice defensive resource. Bishop takes f6, rook takes f6, giving it, giving some material back, but having a very good position. Queen to f8, check. queen check, and here. And, um, yeah... White plays knight to c3. And now all black needs to do is to play the very normal knight to c6. And black will be completely winning. <laughs> it's really that simple. And um, what what's really ironic about this game is black plays probably the only move that loses the game. And, um, yeah. That move is queen to g8. And, um, yeah, if you would like, pause the video now to try to find... Um, yeah, the win for white here. It's not so obvious, but um, it's pretty. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what a topsy-turvy game, right? First white, or first black is better, then white is better, then black is better. And now black is giving away the win. So again, pause the video now if you want to try to find the winning move for white. Okay, so the winning move is... Rook to e1, exclamation point, and uh... Yeah, the only move that uh, wins and doesn't lose. <laughs> Queen takes g5, check. and rook to e8, check. Note this pawn is a monster. Queen to g8, and white played a move, and black resigned. Pause now if you want to try to find the next winning move. Alright, the winning move is not, um, yeah, pretty obvious, f7. And, uh, yeah, black resigned, as there are many threats, you know, various mate threats here, also threatening to promote, etc., so yeah, a very typical romantic era game where, <laughs> you know, it's topsy turvy. You know, yeah, the advantage advantage is swinging both ways, and um, yeah, just a yeah a slip up from black in the end. But um, a very fun game and a cute one to show. Okay, let's move on to the next game. Okay, so let's move on to um, game six. Let's have another romantic style game. Um, so yeah, the white player in this game was Adolf Anderson, and the black player was Lionel Kazurtsky. Okay, so let's see how this game went down. This game was played in 1851, so let's jump right into it. Check. 
So we have the queen to h4 check line and b5. Um, so yeah, this is 1851 when this when this um, game was played, and um, in that time, players like to sacrifice pawns and have horrible positions. And um, no, I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> um, b5 is always interesting. Um, probably not very good, but an interesting try. Knight to f3, queen to h6, which I don't really like, to be honest. I don't like going into this diagonal. Just because you're asking for some sort of tactics. But okay, it was tried in this game. Knight to c3, normal, c6, bishop c4, and d6. Okay, freeing this bishop. d4 getting the center, knight to h5. And um, as we saw in the last video, this um, is a very <laughs> cute idea with um, knight to g3 as a threat. Or at least an idea. Knight to e2 sort of defends that. Bishop b7, normal, e5, d5. Okay, so we reached a uh, closed center. Bishop d3, castles, and rook to g1, and you're already sensing <laughs> the clear ideas here. Okay, and g5, um, yeah, which is also approved by my engine, after which probably white should play the very, yeah, complicated move, g4, and um, it's a very complicated game. In those lines, white tries to get h4 and some sort of crazy attack. But that was not played. And the move chosen was king to e1, which is a very cute um, move. f6, which makes sense, trying to peel open some lines against the king. g3. Black took. Knight takes. And, yeah, what did black play? Black played bishop g4, which is... Yeah, not very good, as we'll see in a moment. Black should probably play the move knight to g7 here, which seems a bit passive, but it sort of closes that g-file a bit. And, um, okay, while the game remains very complicated, I think it's white even there that has a slight pull. However, the move that was played is bishop g4, which makes sense in a lot of ways, but allows white a very, very, very nice tactical shot here. Um, so, yeah, the move is... Knight takes g5, exclamation point, and, um, yeah, it's very, very nice. Okay, of course, black um, grabbed the queen, and knight to f5, which is the point. Maybe even stronger was the move knight to e6, um, with um, various discovered ideas. But the move chosen is also okay, knight to f5. And notice that the queen on h6 does not have any square. And, um, okay, black um, grabbed the knight. Check. Knight takes h6, king to g7, and bishop g5. Very nice move. Check. Knight to f5. And we reach this position where um, black has two bishops hanging. King to h6, rook takes d1, and here. And, um, okay, material is, you know, <laughs> somewhat okay for black. But um, what should be noted here is the very poor position of the black king. This rook on g1 completely cuts off that king. Friend departed. And um, it's a very hard to play position. Rook to d3, very strong, using the rook laterally with these ideas. Rook to f8, bishop g4, and um, rook to f4, which allows rook to h3. And, um, okay, white is now in really, really good shape. Check. Rook to e4, check. King to f2. Check. And, um, black goes on a checking rampage. <laughs> check. Check. And, um, check. okay, white has to dodge all these checks. Here, of course, if, um, rook takes c1, then rook takes g4 is okay for black, but, um, white has king to a4 running. Check. 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 <laughs> King to a6. And now um, black gave up the rook for the bishop. And, um, okay, after rook takes g4, it's a pretty easy win. Bishop uh, b6. Rook to g8. Check. Oops, sorry, wrong button. <laughs> bishop b6, rook to g8. Um, yeah. And now um, white moved the e-pawn, which is um, the easiest win. E7. Check. And now, um... Check. Promotes, and, uh... Yeah, of course, Black resigned here. So, a very nice uh, tactical game here. I really wanted to show that, uh... Very nice... 
Um, Knight takes g5. So yeah, very nice game by uh, Anderson. All right, let's move on to the next game. Okay, so moving on to game seven. The white player in this game was Vasily Ivanchuk, or Chucky, my man Chucky. <laughs> and uh, the black player was um, Jerome Pickett, um, which I recognize the name. Forgive me for mispronouncing it. Um, okay, so this game was played in Lenar's 1997. All right, so let's see how uh, Ivan Chuck handles this game. All right. C6, very common. Arrived. And the immediate D5. So, yeah, this is an interesting try. Um, very, very rare. I don't know. <laughs> Probably uh, not very check. good. But um, it's interesting. Now the check. But after king to F1, F3. Okay. Please note that the bishop is hanging. <laughs> uh, that's very. That's a very important detail to notice. Um, D3. All, um, of course, D4 was also possible, but uh, Chucky opting for D3 instead. Check. We have the trade here, and it appears that this king is is really weak, right? But it, it turns out that the king is surprisingly safe here on G2, as there aren't many, uh, yeah, black pieces in the attack. Knight to F6, and, um, okay, white gave the check. King to D8 was needed. Um, of course, bishop E7, D6 is not what black wants. <laughs> not very good. So king to D8, and the very nice queen to E5, which is a move I really, really like. Um, perhaps with, um, uh, sorry, I'm choking on my own <laughs> spit there. Um, queen to E5, um, perhaps with the idea of bishop F4. And um, this is a very nice idea, and how it turns out is that it actually more or less forces black to trade queens here with this interesting and nice uh, move, queen to f2, king takes, Check. and black gets his queen back. So, um, yeah, black felt <laughs> threatened a bit, I guess is a good word to put it, and um, forced the trade of queens, but um, the problem is white has a very nice lead in development, and... Um, after bishop f4, knight to b or knight to g6, bishop g3, I think it's pretty clear that um, yeah, white is in really good shape with very nice development. F6, knight to f3. Server announcement. Check. Fast forwarding up a couple moves and knight to e6, and um, black doesn't want to let white get this g7 pawn, of course. So bishop takes e6, and um, yeah, all of a sudden this pawn has become a monster on the e6 square. Knight to e7, rook to f1, knight to c8, and king to e7. So this king has been transferred to e7, where it's a nice blockading square. Also note that this knight on c8 also covers d6, making sure that there's no uh, bishop d6 check or anything like that. Of course, this bishop is also there, but... Okay, I also want to point out that although the position is very uncomfortable for black, black also puts on a really good uh, task of defending this. So let's see how this game continued. Bishop h4, rook to f8, c3, bishop d6, king to h1, just getting the king out of the way. b5, knight to c7. So black is obviously um, yeah, organizing his pieces quite well. Um, also note that this knight also covers the a, a8 rook, <laughs> so that after, you know, for example, a6 and captures the a pawn can recapture. But okay, white took immediately, and d4. So very simple, but also strong. Um, supporting, um, advancing in the center, a5, rook to f3, a4, and rook to g1, which is a very nice move. Attacking that uh, g7 pawn. Knight to e8. Okay, captain passivity. Defending everything. <laughs> also, um, a move approved by my engine. And um, a good defensive try. Obviously, the position is very uncomfortable for black. Okay, a3. And uh, white grabbed the pawn. And g5. Check. White gave the check first. Knight to c7. And here... Um, Vasily missed a very nice win with the nice shot. First, let's see what move was played. That's knight takes d. Um, yeah, knight takes d6 was played. 
um, after Knight to C7. Vasily actually missed a really nice win here. With um, missed at least an immediate win with the nice shot. Rook takes um, G5 here. With the point being that after F takes G5, Check. we have um, this line. Check. And if Knight takes D6. Check. Checkmate. This. Not very fun. And if Rook takes here, Knight to B6. Check. Check. We have this line, um, double check. And um, after the king moves, white can just grab the rook. So going back um, here, rook takes g5 would have been a really nice way to end the game. But okay, that was missed. But what was played is also um, winning. And that's knight takes d6. And um, yeah, rook takes d6 and um, white can just grab the knight. King to a d8 and rook to f7 and uh, black resigned as the position is um, completely hopeless. But um, this is a really cute game. I had to show it um, just because it's a very nice uh, yeah, example of <laughs> how crushing um, this opening can be. Okay, so let's move on to the next game. Okay, so moving on to game 8. Here's another um, very nice uh, miniature. Um, so yeah, the white player in this game was Max Lange, and the black player this time was Adolf Anderson. Okay, so let's see how this game went down. Check. So the immediate check, king to f1, and g5. So yeah, this is one of the sharpest um, tries for black. Um, also pretty interesting. Knight to c3, bishop g7, and d4. Knight to e7 and g3. So this is a, yeah, very well-known line, very crazy, where um, as after takes, king to g2, black sort of has to play queen to h6, and um, yeah, after h takes g3, queen to g6, we reach this um, more or less theoretical position where um, white chooses between knight to h3 and knight to f3. Okay, knight to f3 was chosen in this game. h6, rook to f1, and now, yeah, black castle, which, you know, maybe could be questioned. Maybe um, d6 is a bit better. Um, castling is still okay. It's playable. It's just a, it's a tad risky. As after knight to e5, black more or less has to give up the bishop with uh, bishop takes e5. And after the recapture, knight to c6, white has, yeah, the very pretty rook to f6. Queen to g7, and now queen to h5, and this is still playable, but black has to play very precisely to hold the balance. Um, as you can imagine, that didn't happen in this game, but um, let's see, what did black play here? Knight takes e5, which isn't very good, but um, it's yeah, it leads to a very pretty win for white. Um, a better defensive try was um, king to h7, and um, with the idea being that if bishop d2, okay, I was trying to get the rook here, then um, knight takes e5 now is much better because after rook to h1, um, ah, get rid of that, <laughs> knight to g8, rook takes yeah. h6, knight takes, and uh, bishop takes g5, can be met by the very cute rook to g8, and um, okay, check. After we have these trades, Check. king to g7. It turns out black can survive this. And, um, okay, the game continues from this position. So this was an interesting uh, defensive try. Obviously, it's far from obvious, but it's cute nonetheless. And it's worth pointing out. Going back, black tried to take immediately. But this backfires really hard. Because after rook takes h6, the move d6 is needed to try to get this bishop out, get developed, and try to protect the king. However, black uh, was material hungry and grabbed the bishop. But now after, bishop takes um, g5 with this idea. Knight to g6 and knight to d5 with these ideas, both of which are threats. Check. Black had to, yeah, try to deflect one of the minor pieces away with, uh, yeah, the sort of desperado, um, yeah, knight to e3 check. Okay, obviously the piece was taken d6 now, but it's all too late, because after rook to h1, rook to e8, 
White played a very nice move here with bishop d4, and uh, black resigned. As after queen takes d4, white has a very nice um, mating motif with Check. rook takes g6. Check. And uh, Check. this idea, and um, yeah, bishop f5, Check. desperados, Checkmate. and a, an eventual mate on um, yeah f6. So... Yeah, a very nice game, a very nice quickie game to take a look at. I rather like that one. All right, let's move on to game nine. Okay, moving on to game nine. Yeah, this is a very nice um, game by, uh, yeah, Rudolph. <laughs> Not Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but uh, a different Rudolph. The black player was um, Emmanuel Lasker, so let's see how this game went down. All right. So Emmanuel Lasker choosing um, d5 here, check. and now the check. Okay, so this is a popular idea, seen a lot. Okay, king to f1, and now g5. Again, sharp. <laughs> Whenever you see these, uh, yeah, d5 connected with g5 lines, very sharp. So white chooses to play knight to f3 immediately, and h4. So yeah, very crazy. Bishop g7, knight to c3, c6. Bishop c4, and bishop g4. So very classical, and king to f2, and uh, yeah, I really like that move. It's very cute. What it does is it defends the rook on h1, making um, h takes g5 a threat, and also more or less forces bishop takes f3, as after f takes, um, or g takes f3, excuse me. White has, yeah, a very nice center. <laughs> And um, after castling long, h takes g5. And knight to e2, um, I really like uh, white's position as this f4 pawn is getting ganged, ganged on by um, a lot of minor pieces. Bishop takes f4, knight takes f4. Oops, here. <laughs> um, queen to e7 was tried. c3 supporting the center. And here Emmanuel Lasker um, tried knight to e5, which is a cute um, idea. Obviously, you can't take because of the queen. So queen to a4 was tried. Also, eyeing this um, pawn on a7. We have the trades. And knight to f6. And it's almost positionally, you know, <laughs> which is kind of odd from the three bishop c4 king's gambit. But um, after knight to f6, bishop takes f4. This is almost a dream position for white, right? Very nice development. The king is perfectly safe on f2, and the center is absolutely beautiful. And so you put that all together, and it's a very nice position for white. So knight to uh, d7 was tried. Queen to a4. Again, threatening here. a6. And queen to a5, maiden one threat, very important to note. <laughs> um, okay, knight to f8, covering that. Knight to g3, knight to e6, and knight to f5, very nice. Queen to f8, bishop g3, very simple but strong. Work to d7, knight, take, um, knight takes g7, queen takes g7. And queen to e5, which is a good move, very human move. Um, there are, there are um, alternatives, but this is very simple and human, and um, it goes into a very nice end game that White uh, yeah plays very nicely. F6. Okay, White decided to take it. Work to F8, and work to H6. And uh, yeah, it's obvious that White with these nice pawns um, is really winning. <laughs> um, and White shows good play. Okay, K to G3 or E3, excuse me. Check. Check, king to d2, doubles, but now just e5 is simple. And we'll just fast forward a bit. Okay, doubles, c4, king to e3. Very nice play, very nice technical play. Oops, wrong button. <laughs> um, knight to f4, doubles, c4, sorry. And now d5, getting these pawns going. e6. And, um, yeah, black resigned as these pawns are just way too strong for obvious reasons. So a very nice game by uh, Rudolph against um, <laughs> Lasker. And uh, a good game just to, yeah, a very nice game using those center pawns. Okay, let's move on to the next game. Okay, so game 10 and the final game of this video. 
Okay, so I decided to um, leave it off with a very nice miniature, a very nice attacking game, and hopefully a nice way to end the video. So let's see how this game went down. D5 and knight to f6. Okay, very solid line for black. Knight to f3. I'm just bouncing ahead. C6. Bishop b3. Check. And instead of trading, black um, got a bit aggressive and gave the check. Okay, you rarely see that. I think black normally when he plays this is fine with a queen trade. But okay, not in this game. Knight takes e4. Queen to e1. Bishop f5 defends the knight. Knight to h4. Rook to e8. And uh, white grabbed the pawn. Knight to f6. And queen to g3. And um, already <laughs> it's very, very nice for white. Bishop g6 was tried, but now knight takes g6, h takes g6. And the very nice bishop um, takes b8 with the idea that after the recapture, rook takes f6 is very strong. And um, yeah. Check. With this idea, again, note the pin. King to h8. Of course, um, king here Check mate. is met by mate. So king to h8. But now bishop takes f7. Queen to e3. Check. And um, check. After um, bishop to g6 check, black resigned as king to g8 check. can be met by this. Check mate. And king to h6 can be met by a lot of things, but um, probably the simplest is to take the rook, really, check. and just be a piece up. There's probably better moves as well, but this is the simplest. So going back, um, a very nice game. Let's get a recap of that game. Instant replay. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, after the king's gambit. Check. So a very nice game, just instant replay. <laughs> just a nice one to go back and look at. Very nice. Bishop takes f4 or b8 with this idea. And after a couple more moves, Check. black Check. Um, resigned. Check. So, um, yeah, very nice game by White, and, uh, yeah, very cute game. Very simple to explain, but um, a very nice one again. So, yeah. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed um, those very cute games, very nice uh, miniatures, very nice uh, displays of chess greatness, and uh, yeah, I hope you got a little something. I hope you learned um, a thing or two about this Bishop C4, King's Gambit. Um, yeah, it's an interesting try, and um, it leads to very interesting play. As you can imagine, the draw rate in this line is very, very low. But, um, yeah, as I said in the beginning of the video, I honestly believe that the more prepared opponent usually wins. And, um, hopefully, if you play this, that is you. So, yeah, um, so, as I mentioned earlier in the video, um, there will be future parts. I don't know when the next one will come out, but, um, hopefully soon. We'll probably move on to, um, after the King's Gambit. We'll probably move on to Knight to F3 next, and we'll start taking a look at different lines out of the Knight to F3 um, King's Gambit. But anyways, that is my time for this video. If you did enjoy, please uh, hit that like button, you know, share it with your friends, tell, the, tell your friends about the channel, etc. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you dudes around on the next uh, Gambit File video. Until next time, as always, it is me, DGL, or Dill's Gambit Live, signing off for now. Stay classy, dudes, and I'll see you later. Peace.